Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm, my name is Brian Perry. I am an independent consultant living down in the Rift Valley in Kenya, and I've my pleasure to have uh, my old friend Jimmy Smith. And Jimmy Smith said to me over breakfast, "Can you not?" Let me have a little bit of a look at your uh, questions because we do go back a long way, uh, <laughs> and uh, and indeed we do go back a long way. And so, uh, first of all, Jimmy, congratulations on your appointment. Is it congratulations? <laughs> uh, uh, when we had dinner in Rome uh, uh, some not that long ago, uh, you said uh, you were increasingly very comfortable in the World Bank. You were definitely not looking for any change, and you were not going to apply for this job. Why why did you change your mind? Why did I change my mind? Um, I foolishly thought that all that glittered was gold, and um, that might not be the case. No, um, when they, I, I'm not sure why I changed my mind, but probably most important factor was many colleagues called me up. Um, um, many colleagues in the bank and outside the bank came to my office and said, you know, this is your chance to make something really happen, important happen for livestock. I became completely seduced by that, and here I am. A bit, a bit worried about the ones inside the bank that wanted you to go. <laughs> is there anything behind that? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I, um, my relationships with the bank are as solid as ever. Okay, very good. Now, uh, but is this a real job? Uh, or has the thunder, or has the thunder of Ilry uh, as an institute been stolen by these CRPs? No, it's a real job. Um, the donors to the system have been trying for a long time to get the whole to be created under some of the parts. They have tried many things. You may recall the, the eco regional programs, the system wide programs, the challenge programs. None of them seem to have done what was required to get the whole CGIR being larger than the sum of the parts. I think this is our last chance. Okay. Oh, no, so uh, will you be a figurehead, a sort of a partisan for livestock? Is that your role? Uh, to try and the, for the last chance? I listened to Carlos very carefully and couldn't characterize him after the end of his talk. I suppose you're going to be a mixture of all of those. Um, principally, we have to grow the pie. The livestock pie is too small. We can compete more aggressively to get a bigger share of a small pie. But that's not what we need. We need a big pie. And um, so it's both a bit of advocacy, um, a boat of uh, trying to stimulate, uh, motivate science to come up with the big and transformative things so that we can show an impact. So um, let me say, I'm going to be a uh, facilitator par excellence. Okay, now will you in fact really be reporting to Tom Randolph and Delia Grace who are running the big, uh, uh, big programs? I mean, what's going to be the power structure in, in, in Italy? Don't put ideas in me. <laughs> <laughs> You've they always been mischievous. You know? <laughs> they've already got those ideas, Jenny. I mean, they're, they're trying to work out what their role is with you, I'm sure. Um, I am very clear about what my role is with them. So um, there is no no doubt in my mind. Okay, it's well, a, we it's a good part. We were, okay, we won't pursue it. What's going to change? Uh, all have been saying the last couple of days how wonderful Carlos is, and here we've got this great trajectory. Uh, uh, is it business as usual? You've juggled a few positions at the uh, at the exterior. Is that it? No, it can't be business. Of as usual, the CG has changed in very fundamental ways. This is probably the biggest shift in the CG modus operandi ever. And it can't be business as usual, it's a new model. So we have to adapt to that model and stay tuned. Okay, with the exception of Ross Gray, the former, uh, the last DG of ILRAD, the standard practice for incoming directors general is to do a round of discussions in the offices of the staff, listen to the troubles and aspirations, and then quickly back to the bunker of the DG's office for the rest of the tenure. Uh, uh, I hear you've already done the rounds. Is it soon time to dig in? Well, um, no. No, not at all. 
not at all, but um, I, as I was doing the wrongs, I felt rather very much like a clinician without any medicine. <laughs> but we have to get some and get some quickly. So it's not bunker time, not at all. Um, it is making all the staff an extension of the DG's office. Okay, did you all hear that? <laughs> Uh, now, I mean, but you, you're a very affable, approachable chap, Jimmy. Uh, but do you also have teeth? I've never seen them. <laughs> Metaphorically, I mean. <laughs> ask, those, ask those who I've negotiated with. I pick my battles. I don't sweat the small stuff. But I can dig in. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Let's sort of pick up a point that I raised with Carlos yesterday, the, the, the livestock and poverty reduction conundrum. Philo philosophically, where do you sit on this? Uh, uh, the, the survival of the smallholder or the broader processes of poverty reduction through <coughs> livestock embracing uh, various levels? Um, Brian, when I heard you ask this question, it was clear to me that you have spent a lot of time listening to Paul Collier uh, and, and what he had to say about this. Well, um, I, 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 we're, we're both uh, have affiliation with Oxford, so yeah, uh, absolutely, yeah. what do you expect? Um, I think it's a mixture of both, but our role is how to make the smallholder benefit from the opportunities in food production. Um, so, yeah, I'm not saying it's going to be all smallholder driven, but our mandate is to have them participate in the change. And more recently, it's not only on the production side, so those who produce it, but how are we going to engage with poor consumers as well, as you might have heard of the debate here. So yeah, um, a lot of the growth will be um, facilitated by large producers, but we must make smallholders benefit or we would not have done our jobs. But of course, making smallholders benefit, but in order to get smallholders to benefit more, surely there is a need for greater integration with livestock enterprises at a, at a larger, let's say at a national level, uh, to, to look at all these interfaces between uh, the, the movers, uh, the fast movers, the medium movers and, and the slow movers. Is that not correct? That's all correct, and that's why Tom Randolph doesn't sleep at night. He's figuring out how to do all this. Okay, <laughs> now don't try and divert the uh, answer to Tom Randolph. That's just not fair. <laughs> um, is that all? You've devolved no. uh, straight away. Uh, what responsibility? Brian, part of the DG's job is to delegate. <laughs> you keep those jobs which no one else wants to do. Okay. In your inaugural, you did an inaugural presentation which I looked at on, on the web. Uh, you talked about climate smart systems. Uh, I know you'll need a few eye-catching slogans, but what are the practical deliverables on this? An inaugural? I don't remember doing such a thing. Maybe well, it is, um, maybe what are you referring to? Well, was, well, it's on the website under, uh, under uh, Jimmy Smith, and it's a little presentation. Uh, that, that, that I went through. Maybe it was when you were being recruited. Um, uh, anyway, you did talk about... Ah, so you've forgotten about climate smart systems. <laughs> no, 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 I haven't forgotten about it. Um, climate smart agricultural systems mean that we will try to reduce the footprint of livestock so that as we expand the production and productivity, cutting the the, the footprint, reducing the footprint is an important part. But, but, but also dealing with resilience. How would, um, how would livestock systems adapt to changing climate, even as we do so? So it's a slogan, a bit of a slogan, and we all need that from time to time, but there's a great deal of substance behind it. But given that, that IRI is promising now deliverables and impact, what are the practical deliverables of this? Uh, Mario? <laughs> but the, the, the practical deliverables of all this straight away is that we must, one of the things we say we must do to reduce poverty is to increase smallholders' productivity. By increasing smallholders' productivity, if the same cow which gives two liters of milk today uh, gives 20 liters tomorrow, then we would have cut the emissions intensity per unit of animals significantly. That's 
a, a, a real game. Okay, that's the sort of principle. You, in, you also talked in this uh, in this about revitalizing, with your word, training as a research approach. But surely the engagement of masters, PhD, and postdocs in early research has been long-standing. So, so what do you get at getting at with the revitalizing? Long-standing, but at diminishing rates. I think Carlos said yesterday that that's one part of the CG where our partners um, gain the most, at least in their eyes. That's the place where the CG has been making the most important contribution. And over the years, this has declined significantly. Revitalizing means that we should fill up all these dormitories and so on with the constant stream of uh, PhD and postgraduate people who are the youngest, fittest, more and most energetic, more current. I'm a historian. I did science a long time ago. I'm the best a scientific historian. Those are the innovators, so we've got to get them back into the system, and a lot more of them. You've written on the importance of agribusiness, uh, uh, and you were probing Carlos yesterday on the role of the private sector. Uh, are you planning a new approach for uh, Ilri in public-private partnerships? I don't know about a new approach, but um, a key part um, in my mind is how are we going to get our research products into development. Um, that has been the Achilles heel of the CGI. Uh, we do good work and uh, we are recognized for doing that good work. But when we go around uh, looking at what is our real impact, it's not evident on the ground. Of course, there's a dispute about where should we be having impact. Is it downstream or upstream? Wherever it is, we've got to be sure that the products we produce get into use somehow. And the private sector is possibly one means of doing that. Coming from a development bank, um, I've been always concerned that more of the CG products did not get funded in development projects by the bank. We invest not we anymore. The bank, the World Bank invests about two and a four and a half billion dollars every year in agriculture development in, in, in the world, of more, about half of it here in Africa. We don't put a lot of that money into CGIR products, at, at least not specifically. They're hard to design. How can we make that happen? And these are some of the things that I've been thinking about. Excellent, that's very exciting. Um, uh, uh, on Hank's accession, Hillary had some engagement in Latin America in the, in the out of Africa uh, phase. Um, and then there was a very successful program in, in Central America, which Hillary uh, decided it was too stretched to work in Latin America. I hear you may be reconsidering that. Um, there, was, there was no divorce from these parts of the world, as best I could tell. Um, this was a resource constraint. At the time when Ilri was created, resources into the CGIAR were um, declining and very scarce to come by. So that um, getting out of Africa and into other parts was essentially a resource constraint, not a benign neglect of, of those areas. So yes, I would like to get back to wherever there are significant portions of poor people, and they are in the Andes of Latin America and Central America but it is going to be a matter of resource mobilization. I've been reminded of this many times. Our old board men of member, Sharon, some of you will remember him. I don't know if anybody in this room remembers Sharon, apart from me and you, Brian, we did, you know. Um, Sharon wrote me recently inviting me to a conference next year in Thailand, and he said, Jimmy, is um, Hillary coming back to Asia in small canoes or big ships? <laughs> Okay, my last question, you just raised this issue of funding. Well, and on the new things that you're going to do, how are you going to address this uh, never-ending problem of funding for, uh, for Hillary? You know, I've, I've been a researcher in the CG and other places. I have been a bilateral donor. I've been a multilateral donor. My experience in, a, in donor agencies, both at the bank and at CEDA, has been that I've never come across a really good idea that I couldn't fund or get one of my colleagues to fund. So I am of this belief, perhaps naively, but it's been my experience, that good transformative ideas get funded. And if our scientists were able to come up with those ideas, 
we will find the money. Very good, very confident. Jimmy, the best of luck and thank you very much indeed. Aye.